I'm so sorry. I will just start recording from now. The reason why Excel recorded, I mean, the reason why Excel formatted this to the left is because Excel do not see this as a number, this three. Because before I wrote the three, if you can look at my formula box up here, you will see I put a apostrophe and I put three. So I did apostrophe three. So immediately Excel says this is not a number. But if I type number three alone, it will format it to the left. These two are what you call Boolean, true and false. And Excel sees this true and false. It sees true as one and it sees false as zero. So for example, one plus one will give you two, right? So this is true. This is one, right? If I do equals to one plus true, the answer is two because Excel sees true as one. And Excel sees false as zero. Excel sees false as zero. For example, I have, I have this one again here. I want to multiply false plus one. So equals to false plus one. The answer is one. Because Excel sees false as zero. And Excel sees true as one. Right? So Excel is very logical in its thinking. So if we want to freeze paint, right? We want to say Excel, I want you to... I want this top this top rule, right? I want you to freeze it, right? So I go to the to the um, text just be just before what I want to freeze, and I tell Excel, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to work around the the zoom button that is disturbing my flow. I think I will let me try and minimize this, okay? and maximize the bits so it will not yeah so we go to view right and we tell excel freeze paint so what excel will do excel will freeze this top part right for us so where we are coming down what you can say that no matter how far we go our headers are still there no matter how far we go our headers are still there right so our, our headers are there and it makes it easier for us to analyze any data or any information that we have to analyze. Is that clear? Is that, is that straightforward? Is that straightforward, everybody? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Thank you, UY. I think you're the one that responded to me. The rest of us are not responding to it. It is well low. It is well low. Um, <laughs> I got it too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, oh, oh, yeah, God. Take it again. Take it again. Take it again. Okay. I'll take it one last time. So, we have free spins and free spins is to help um freeze a particular role or column that we want to see and for this example what what, what we want to see is that we don't want we don't want this um we want to see the header no matter how far we go right in the data right so what we do is that we, we, we go to the letter just before the letter just before um the the what we want to freeze. For example, what we want to freeze is the headers, right? And we come to cell C5, right? Cell C5. And we go to view tab and freeze pins, right? Just go view tab and freeze pins, right? And automatically, what you can see is that no matter how far we go, the, the header still remains, right? And to undo it is the same thing. Just go here and go to unfreeze pins, right? It's as simple as that, right? Freeze pins or freeze pins. Very simple, right? I would I would skip this because I don't think it's very important. If we have time, we'll go back to it, right? If you have time, we'll go back to it. We'll go to fast scrolling, right? Just because of I'm 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 looking at time and we have to be done by 12, 12, 10, because we started 10 minutes later. Right. So fast scrolling. For example, now we have this data, right? And let's say you, you want to go to the last data. Most of us will just keep on going down and down, we're just pressing the arrow key down and down and down and down and down before we know, before we count. Before we see Jack Sparrow, is before we get to the last one, or we go to the cursor here and be dragging our cursor down here, right? The easiest way to fast scroll is to press Control and Direction key. So, for example, let me put it here. Let me type it here. Control plus the Direction down key. So the arrow down key, arrow down, or arrow up key. Right. So if I want to go to the last, the last cell with a value, the last cell with a value from on this column C, I just press Control and down. 
and it takes me to the last cell. Instead of me going one by one by one, if I want to go to the first cell with a value, I click on Control and Up key, right? Control down, Control up. Very, it's very, it's, it's very simple, but just very, I mean, very straightforward. These just some sim simple Excel useful tips and, and tricks that will help us, right? The next one is referencing. <laughs> referencing. Um, I will skip this because we will treat this in um, when we get to formulas. So I will skip this as well. We'll treat this when we get to formulas, right? Because this is also the bane of, I mean, on understanding how to input formulas in Excel, right? I'll skip this and we'll talk about it when we get to um, formulas, right? Uh, then we have text column. Now, I don't know if you are, if, if you've ever been given the data where you have, it's like we have so many information, all this information are all in one, right? So what you can see here, we have the person's name, the person's son name, the person's gender, the person's age, and the person's, let's say, salary. Right, so we have all these things, right? But let's say when we're inputting it from the source file, right? It, it all came like this, right? And sometimes the now access are, um, Yeka, I want you to separate this information. Imagine, I mean, this is how many information, how, how many lines we have here. We have 31, right? Imagine you have about 15,000 lines, right? I mean, 31. So, someone can see this manually and their mind, ah, I have work today. What do you do? I was separating this thing from this thing, right? And actually, when you are when you go into data analytics or mm, just general Excel, this day Excel, right? And you want to, and I have something as 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 complex as this, right? And, and all you want to do is just to break it down, right? You, um, there are easy ways to do it. And another thing I, I, need, I need to point out here is that in Excel, there are a thousand and one ways to do a thousand and one things. So for everything you want to do, for everything you want to do, they are almost like five formulas, five ways, five different ways to do it, right? So I, I will teach us two ways, right, to extract this data, right? The first way I will teach you is to is the semi-manual way, right? It's semi-automatic way, right? And it works. It depends on what you want to do. And I said Excel is very smart. It thinks very linearly. And, and you will see why I said Excel is smart. So let's say we want to separate this name, surname, gender, age and salary let's say for the first one the first his name is andre right so i do andre right his second name is cooper i do cooper is um his gender is male he identifies as male not anything else um his age is 45 years and his salary is um eighty thousand dollars right so i've done this right one one easy way to do this is to press for this right and that way i can auto fill everything here is to press ctrl e i just press ctrl e and you can see excel is so smart that he went through everything and just took the first name from me so ah, i think this is what you want to do right i say yes except i want to do i go to the next one i press ctrl e ctrl and e Excel feels everything again. I say, ah, Excel, bad guy, bad guy. You know, you did it again. I go to the next one, Control E. He automatically knows that. Okay, since I am, he's basically following the pattern on, on top. Ah, okay, just copy and paste, copy and do, copy the same way. Control E, Control E, and like that, I have separated everything based on Excel's understanding of what I was trying to do. Right, right. Excel just. Flash field, set so, uh, man. I think I think this is what we want to do, right? And truthfully, that's what we want to do, right? So that's what we did, right? As simple as that, because that's what we want to do. That's what we did, right? Um, the the other the other way to do it, right? This is way one, right? And we did flash fill, right? Just press Control E, right? It's it's very simple and it's it's very F F efficient step right control e the next way to do it is that there's an excel um tool that we can use it's called text to column text to column so let's say we have this these are different texts but we want to separate it into step several columns we go to our data tab here where you have data here data and under data tools you see 
a fun a tool called text text to column text to column basically it's the tool helps to split single column of text into multiple columns and that's what we want to do split this single column of text into multiple columns right so we click on text to column right and it opens up a wizard for us right and it says what is i mean what do you want to do do you want to what is the data type is this fixed width or delimited so basically, except saying that what is separating the different things, for, for example, what is separating our the, the first column from the second column, from the third column, from the fourth column? For us, it is a space. There's a space in between Andre, Cooper, male, 45 years, and this thing. There's a space, right? So this space is what we are using to separate it, right? So, or fixed width. If, if, if there's a fixed width, let's say all the... All letters are four characters, five characters, four characters, five characters. We can do fixed width. But here, yeah, the names are different, 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 different width, right? It's more about a particular um, delimiter, whether it's space or semicolon. So we say Excel is a delimiter and we go to next. So Excel is asking us, what is the delimiter? What is, what should I note? What should I note? We say Excel, there are spaces in between. So what you can say Excel does is that it previews for you here. Yeah, it shows you. It's OK, well, I, I saw space between Andre and Cooper. I saw space between Cooper and Mill. I saw space between 45 and years. I saw space like this, right? So Excel says, OK, well, this is what I did, right? In two different, different spaces, right? I'm going to click on Next. I'm going to tell Excel when, whether I should do it from, from column B or it should start from column C. So we say Excel starts from column C. Right, starting from column C, I see all my original data. I'll click on finish. Right, click on finish, and you can see Excel does the same thing for us. Right, Andre, name, first name, son name, gender, age. But you can see here, yeah, X because there's a space between 45 and years, Excel treated it as two different columns, right? And the salaries, right? Are we clear? Is it, is it, are we clear? Are we clear? I'm clear. Okay, awesome. So I believe others on the call too are also clear. So we we move right. So um, it depends on um, it depends on the 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 kind of method you want to use, right? So you can use the first method, the flash view method, or you can use this method. Whichever method works for you, by all means, please use. We have alt enter, right? Um, it's it's not a major thing, but like, I mean, it, it can help, right? So, well, let me let me just save let's save time, right? I'm I'm just trying to just stick to the to the major ones because we still have a long way to go. Um, we have wrap text, wrap text. So basically, when you have a text that is going over the so, for example, this is B, right? We have salary in euro in thousand. Let's say I want to write something in C and I write 70, right? Automatically, my B, what is in B? I cannot see it, everything in full again, right? So there's one way to easily do it, right? It's called wrap text, right? It makes sure that you will see everything written in a particular um, cell, right? You go to home, where you, home, just where you have alignment up here, if you can see my cursor moving, you see wrap text, right? So it's wrap text ex, wraps extra long text into multiple lines so you can see it, right? So I just click on wrap text and voila, you can see salary euro in dollars. I mean, in I mean salary euro in thousands, right? So I can literally see everything all in a particular cell instead of having it spill over or um, disappearing, right? That what you call wrap text. Now, the next thing I, I would like to show us is sort how to sort data, how to filter out data, and I also talk about subtotals, right? And how it really, really helps your work. Um, before we go into sort, I mean sort and then filter. Um, to sort if like if you notice, I just did something now, right? On my sorry. I just did something now on my on my sheets, right? So I sorry, my Excel is hanging because I have multiple things going on. Just give me a bit for it to work. OK. 
Okay. So, Excel, please answer me. Okay. Sorry. So, if you notice right, you can see some some um, filter filter boxes across all my headers, across all my headers, right? And I will tell you how how quickly to get it, right? So, um, in in Excel, right? I don't know if you see some people working in Excel, and you just feel like these people are very smart. My God, these people are really smart. How? How are they able to do all these things? Sharp, 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 sharp. So fine, so fast, right? There's a there's a secret in Excel, right? Called the alt, the alt sign. The alt sign, right? So for example, let's go to home again. Let's let's assume we want to make we want to make this this text here. Here we will cover filter, blah blah blah. Let's say we want to make this here we will cover blah blah blah. We, we want to bold in it. There are many ways to do it. The first way is just come here and click on bold, right? And automatically it's bolding, right? But if you see people that are very familiar with Excel, they 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 try as much as possible to limit the time they work with their cursor or they touch their cursor. They are always just on the keyboard. They really work. They they really work with their mouse or the cursor of their laptop. They are always with their keyboard. Always with their keyboard because generally speaking, it saves time, right? And there's there's a way in Excel you can do it, right? For example, there's what you call Alt. So if you press the Alt key, just press the Alt key on, on your laptop or any system you're using, um, what you will notice is that you see series of letters and numbers automatically appear. So I just press Alt, and from my screen, you can see F H A J I P M A A R W L Y 1 C Y 2 Y 3 all automatically appear, right? And like, ah. How, how did they appear? So basically, it's saying that if you want to go to home, press H. And because we know that bold is in home, right? We'll press H, H, right? So after pressing H, it shows us another set of things again, right? For bold, press one. For index, press two. For underline, press three. Because, because what we want to do is to bolden it. I press one. And automatically, it's boldened. So, Let's say I'm working with somebody and I'm just doing, it's only pressing, I mean, obviously, there are shorter ways of building stuff, right? <laughs> right? But I'm just saying, like, just for, just a useful tips and trick, I just remember that I think I include here, is you can just use the Alt key, right? Alt key. So for example, I'm, now, let's do this um, illustration. Let's say I want to, I want to underline this. What, what would be the Alt, alt function that we use? Or what, what? If I want to under, underline this, what will I use? You can put it on the, I mean, in the, in the comment section. What will I use? What I want to do is to, um, I want to make this underlined, right? So what alt will I use? Alt, what, what? Alt, one, three. Yeah, perfect. Alt, one, three. So let's try. If click on this and press alt, one, three. Alt, one, three. Now. Nah. Alt one three did not work, right? That was the person said. Alt one three did not work. Um, H three, H three. Let me see. I mean, I, I mean, Alt H three. Okay, let me see. Alt H three. Yeah, uh, Alt H three did not work per se <laughs> because Alt H three brought us somewhere here, right? So Alt H three. You know, I mean, I'll say, oh, yes, did not work, right? So what worked or what will work is Alt H3, then Alt H3 U is what will work, right? Alt H3 U. I mean, of I, I know I know there are other ways to do it. You, remember I said that in, in Excel, there are always a thousand, a million, a million and one ways to do a million and one things. Right, I, I mean, you might not you might not value it for underline because they control you. There are other shorter ways to get it, right? But there are for for something like sort now, for example, right? If if I want to sort, right, I go to data, 
data and I press on sorts, right? I, I press on sorts, right? So for example, right, we have we have we have different things we want to sort, right? And in sorting, you can sort on different levels. Let's say we first want to sort the years, sort the years, sort the years from the smallest to the largest, right? Sort the years from smallest to the largest. Then we can even at the second level and say sort the type from A to Z, and on that level again, sort the producers within the within the year and the type from A to Z. I will say again, sort the price per unit again from the largest to the smallest. So we, we have given Excel different ways to sort. So the first thing that we'll do is that it will sort all the years, right? So I mean, from maybe 2020, 2021, 2022, we'll sort it first. Then within the years, it will now sort the type. Then within those type, it will now sort it by product group. And within that product group, it will now sort it by cost. So sorting, Sorting helps us to clearly um, clearly view or clearly arrange whatever we want to see. So if I click on OK here, what it does is that the first thing we said is that sort it by year. So we can see we have 2020 first. About 2020, we have 2020. Ah, it's, a long, it's, a lot, it's a lot of data. We have 2020, you know, we have 2021, and so on and so forth. Then we have convenience stores first. On under 2020. Then for product group, we have alcohol. It 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 will sort it bit by bit by bit by bit. Now, um, if we want to filter, let's say we want to see a particular element, right? We can come here, we can come here, highlight the active cells by control A. If I press control A, all their active cells are highlighted, and I click on filter, right? And I say, okay, you know what? I want to see only um coffee, for example. It will bring me all the coffees from all the years, right? Okay, let's say I've seen coffee. I want to see coffee only in 2023. It brings me coffee in 2023. Okay, I'll see coffee in 2023 by only producer, producer um, J and F, G and F. So it gives me only all the coffees in 2023 by producer J and F, right? So filtering and sorting can just help you better, um, um, analyze the data that you are you want to get right, and to remove the filter, you just click on this filter here, and you remove it, right. So, in the same vein, what is the shortcut? What's the alt shortcut? Remember, alt shortcut is different from normal shortcut. What is the alt shortcut to get to filter? Anybody? I've done it, but what's the alt shortcut to get to filter? Anybody? Let's. Let's see in the in, in, short, in, in, in the chat room. What the alt funk? What the alt um, shift cut? No, I mean I want I, I want us to use alt alt alt. Remember, I, I, I said there yeah, are a thousand and one ways to do it, right? But what is the short way? Someone said alt w. So let me try alt w. Ah, uh, did not give me that, right? What's the alt alt shortcut to get it? I like us to try alt Q, mm -mm, not alt A S S. Someone said alt A S S to so alt A S S. S S is giving me sorts, not filter. Say for filter. For filter, for filter, for filter. If you want to filter. If you want to filter. Alt A T. Perfect. So alt A T automatically I will to filter my data. Then to remove it, alt A T as well. Right, so it's it's pretty straightforward, right? And um, by using the alt key, you begin to get I mean, familiarize yourself with different, different different things, right? And it comes with um more and more and more and more practice, right? As simple as that, right? More and more practice, um, makes perfect, right? Um, okay, so that is for sorting, right? And as I said, there are, there are thousand and one ways, right? There is a new there is a new there's a new um there's a new formula in Excel, right? Called filter, right? And um I'm I'm willing to teach this because it's not available on everybody. I mean, unless you're using Excel 365, are they giving best best students for <laughs> private best students? I mean, we have an activity and there's a, I'm, I'm, I mean, and there'll be prizes for for the best. So there's a new 
there's a new um, formula in Excel called filter, right? So, for example, uh, this it, it might not it might not it might not work for everybody, right? So, for example, let's say I want to filter for yeah. I mean, sorry, I'm I'm not teaching this, right? I'm not teaching it, right? I'm just doing it. I'm not teaching it. Um. Uh, okay. I'm not teaching this, I'm just doing it. Let's say I want to filter for 2020, right? And I put 2020 here. See, it gives me everything and I can drag it down on everything. But there, there, there are, it's, it's basically multiple ways of doing the same thing, right? There are, so it gives me, it filtered everything that had 2020 in it and everything. But that is not what, um, it's, it's a, is a, um, best is it nice to have or nice to know right but you can still function without it right yeah so now this is also very important right and in this right i'm going to teach us how to select special so now i don't know if you, if, you, if you've ever had data where for example right so we have three divisions we have the game division we have productivity division and we have utility division but if you notice there are spaces in between because let's say you got the data and in data, they just assume that ah, everything from here all the way down are for game, right? Everything from here all the way down are for productivity. Everything from here all the way down is for utility, right? But because they don't repeat the data, they just left it one. I say, okay, oh, this game parts, this thing, the rest just auto by yourself. The same thing for um, same thing for dates, right? This guy, right? Two of them were in the same dates, right? They both um, sold it on the same. I mean, we both sold it to them on the same date. So instead of repeating the dates more than once, we just wrote the, the dates once. Same thing with this. Instead of repeating the dates more than once, we wrote the dates once, right? And we're like, oh my god, how huh? will I start cleaning up this data? Will I start doing this one by one and start saying um, games? So now I that thing. Now I think games, 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 games. I mean, it, it may look it may look easy to do because of it's not it's not many data, right? But when you have um a a, a large data set, you will, you will, you will understand that ah man, let get the go. This is very this is very hard, right? How how can I easily do it? Same thing for here. In this place, right where we had space in. In the sales column, right? Anytime the person did not buy anything, it's almost put zero. We just left that space. Anyway, the person did not buy anything, it's almost put zero. We just left that space. We, we cannot come and kill ourselves. We just, we just left it as space, right? So there's a there's a way to work around it. So let's first work with this sales first, right? And say Excel. Anywhere you see space, put zero there. Anywhere you see space, put zero there. Or anywhere you see no value zero day right and i said in excel there are multiple ways to do one thing so for example let's say we highlight everything in sales right we highlight everything in sales i'll teach us two ways the first way is as i said there are always multiple ways the first way is just press ctrl h ctrl h is replace right ctrl h is replace like find and replace find and replace so excel is saying what do you want to find i say excel anywhere you don't say anything I don't find anywhere there's nothing there, put zero. Basically, Excel, anywhere there's nothing there, put zero for me. That's what I want. And if I click on replace all, okay. Automatically, anywhere there was space, Excel has replaced it with zero. As simple as that. Are we all clear with that? Basically, you're Excel, Excel, anywhere there's space, put zero, right? Anywhere there's space, put zero. As simple as that, right? If I press Control Z to remove it, right? There, there's another way to do it. It's what you call using go to special, right? And I, I will not be using many um, shortcuts. I will actually be showing you how to get there. I believe the shortcuts are learned with time, right? Um, the, I mean, the shortcuts to get to different, different places. But to get to go to special, you go to home, right? Home, where you see find and select. So you go to home, yeah? Under editing here, you see find and select. They click on go to special. Find that select and click on go to special, right? So, you know, we highlighted the sales column, right? 
So we are saying Excel. I want you to go to, so we can tell Excel to go to every, everywhere there's a formula. We can tell Excel to go to anywhere there's a blank cell, right? So, so what we want to do is that we want to go to the blank cells, right? So we click on blanks. So Excel highlights all the blank cells. If you click on OK, see, all the blank cells in sales got highlighted automatically. All the blank cells in sales got highlighted. Next thing we want to do is that we want to put zero, right? But don't press enter yet. We want to put zero in every in in all these blank spaces, right? So instead of pressing enter, we'll press control enter instead of enter alone because we want to put it in all the areas where Excel highlighted. So press control enter, and you can see anywhere there was space, there's none zero. Right. So that's another way to do it. Remember, I said in Excel there are a million ways to do a million and one things, right? There are always multiple ways, right? And depending on oh sorry, sorry, I have a hand raised. Please go ahead, please. Okay, um, um I want to ask, I didn't see you on like how you did um sort and sorry, find and replace where you actually typed in zero. When you went to the go to special, I didn't see you type in zero. So how did Excel know that I was supposed to put in zero when you press control enter? Okay, I actually I actually put in zero. So okay. in fact, after clicking on blank, Excel gave me this, right? And I pressed zero, right? So I told Excel, okay, Excel, is there I want to put two? But now control enter it into everywhere. Do you understand? So I, I actually typed zero first before pre asking Excel to control enter. Right. Now the next thing is these ones here, this division and dates, right? Because I said, I mean, for my explanation, I want I want this this one here. I, I want to copy the one, I want to copy what is on top here. So roll C7. So everything that, for example, this game here, this game, this space that is here is meant to be game, right? So what I want Excel to do is that Excel, you know what? Let's use um, go to special to do this one, right? So everybody on your own laptop, I want you to click on, don't, I want to highlight everything here in, in B and C, then go to home and go to, go to special, Tell Excel to highlight all the blank cells. Everybody, just do that. Let's get to this point. When you're done, just say done, 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 done on the comment section. So I won't know about that. So just go to Excel, highlight that B to C, the active cells, and go to and tell Excel to highlight only the blank cells for you. Okay, only one person is done. Ah, have, have, we, have we not done it? Okay, so I think we have people have done it, so we can continue. So now, I said, we don't excel to highlight all the um, blank spaces. Now, this is the idea. This is the idea. We want Excel to copy. Now, this one is not like zero and say put zero everywhere. Because what we want to put is not the same thing for everything, right? We want Excel to say, Excel, anytime you say blank space, copy what is above it. I was gonna, anytime we see a blank space, Oh, sorry, you are just joining. Um, the password, I think I should have, I should have someone that will be working on this. Right, the password is, let me even see the password, the password again. I think it's TAPS01, let me just put it. Um, sorry. TAPS XL01. TAPS XL01, thank you so much. So it's on the, it's on the, um, it's on the sheets, right? Tab, TAPS XL01, that's for useful tips, we're, we're useful tips, right? So, um, Okay. Now we want Excel to copy the value that is 
prior to it to copy the cell above. So what you will do is that now watch carefully. If you press equals to, right, watch where, watch where your equals to came. Right, because for different people, they go to different places. For different people, go to different places. So watch where your equals to is, right? For me, my, my equals to is in row is is just in row C seven. Are we together? Yes, we are. Okay, now I said Excel, I want you to copy because my equals is in row six, seven. I will tell Excel, I want to copy the one above it. That is what is in row C6, but don't press enter. Right? So I said Excel, I said copy the one above it, right? But don't do it for only this one. Do it for everything that is a blank. And I'll press control enter. And you can see that everywhere that there was game, it was space before, yes, inputted game, 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 game. Everywhere there was productivity, after the first productivity, inputted it as well. Same thing for utility and same thing for the dates. Are we together? A very simple tool that can really, really transform your, um, your working knowledge of Excel. Right? A very simple tool that can really transform your working knowledge of Excel. Right? So I believe we are all good on this part. So we're going to the validation. Wow. Okay. So we actually have to run. We have to run. We have to run. We've never done formulas. We really have to run. So um, data, data validation. Oh, can I explain this again? Okay. I'll do it one more time. What about you? Um, I said, I mean, the first thing we did was to highlight just quickly, highlight the the cells that we were we we are working with, right? Which is the um, games, I mean divisions and the dates, right? And we went to go to special, went to find a select on that home tab, go to special and to the Excel, click on all the blank cells. The one Excel clicked on all the blank cells. Um, so the Excel want to copy the cell above it. Want to copy the cell above it. So what we just did was we did equals to, right? And we clicked on the cell above it, right? And instead of pressing enter, because when I, when I accept to replicate it across board, we press control enter, right? And it, and, and re, it replicated it across board, right? So we go to data validation quickly, quickly, quickly. So for example, let's say you have, you you are sending a, an Excel to somebody, right? Or, or you're working with many people. And you know, you know, people can be very funny. I, 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 I used to work in a bank, right? And, um. You know when people um when people are I mean open a, a, a bank account, for example, once the customer feels it in the paper, that put that will key it into the system, right? And because people key it in different particular manner, different particular way. For example, let's say I want to put phone number and I put in 080625. Oh sorry, I'm trying to put my phone, my real number. Let's <laughs> say let me put a fake number. Oh nine oh something, 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 something. Right. This is one way to put numbers, right? So when that will put plus two, three, four, something, 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 right? And it's it it just became a mess, right? Because some people own this plus, some people own this zero, some people own this no people and or some people put their own like this zero eight nine space. Something, 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 space, right? So, like now, except we see this uh, not as a number, but a text. So, when I try to analyze some things, we will be getting errors from everywhere. You're like, oh my God, what's wrong with these people, right? So, there's a way Excel has done it, right? That will help you ensure that what whatever enters a cell is exactly what you want it to enter, what, what you want it to be in Excel, right? And what you call, and, and that what you call data validation, right? Um, in data validation, you can tell Excel, Excel, for this group of cells here, what I want is this particular thing. It should not be anything else at all. For example, and when you get that validation, you go to data, the, your, your data tab. Under the data tab, right, where you have data tools here, data tools, under the data tab, you will see what you see. Um, yeah, um, a small box called data, 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 data validation with the drop down. Data validation with the drop down. Right. So if, if I click on data validation, right? Now there are so make I think Excel Excel for this particular cells I've highlighted, right? I want to give you a I want to give you a a, a rule, right? So for for example now validation criteria at the moment 
is any value. That means Excel will allow any value. So anything you put inside here, Excel will allow it because to Excel, Excel allow anything. But I can I can even say Excel. What 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 I want here should be whole number. So if anybody puts anything less, more than whole number, right? Don't don't accept it. Or I can tell Excel, Excel, I want decimal. It must be decimal. I can tell Excel, I want it. Um, the length should not be more than fifteen characters or twenty characters. Do you understand? So you know people cannot write more than that particular amount of character. Do you understand? But because we can also tell Excel, I want it to be a list. Excel, I want it to be a list. So it, it, people must own. I mean, in this cell, you must only put any of this list, right? And Excel will say, okay, okay. So where's the list you want to work with, right? So we tell Excel, 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 this is the list: drinks or chocolates, right? I I I came here, I came here, I pressed this button and I highlighted these two: drinks and chocolates. So I told Excel, Excel, in this in in this place, what I want to see. It's only drinks and chocolates, drinks and chocolates, right? And I press OK, right? Yes. So I come here, right? So if you notice, there, there's not a drop down box that, that appears, right? In each of each of the um, various, sorry, there's there's a drop down box that appears in each of the various. Sorry, I did it twice. In each of the various drinks and chocolates, right? Okay. There's a drop down box that appears in each of the various um, points, right? So if I click here, it shows me drinks, chocolates. I can just click chocolates here, yeah. drinks, chocolates, drinks, right? So it almost makes your Excel look like as if you're doing a form, right? So basically, you have limited people's option. You have you have limited people's option to a particular, a particular thing, right? So they cannot do more than drinks and chocolates, right? So you have helped save time, right? So you have almost made your Excel like a form, right? Are we together? Are we together? I believe so. I believe so. Susan was answering me. Yes, so I, yeah. Yeah, I think we're together. Okay, nice. Yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm rushing for time, rushing for time, rushing for time. Um. So uh, this one, should I talk about it now? I will skip this. I was uh, formatting. Okay, yeah, I will talk about this. I'm going to formulas. I'll talk about two things. I'm going to formulas. We might not be able to do the activity, but it's something that you can always try on your own. Uh, remove blanks. Uh, I've done that. Okay. So let let me just talk about custom formatting, right? So um. There's a rule in Excel. It says a format changes what you see in a cell, but does not change. I mean, but does not change the cell. A format changes what you see in a cell, but does not change the content of the cell. For example, what we have here, we have five point zero x, but what Excel is seeing here is five. What we have here is two. What we have here is two, right? What we have here. Is ten, but what Excel is seeing is what six is um is see the multiplication of both of them, right? But because of there's an x here, if you multiply five point zero x and two, why is it giving you ten, not ten x? Is because Excel can formatting can change what you see in a cell, but do not necessarily change what's in a cell. For example, if I want to, if I if I say I have two cars, right? Two cars, right? But I want I want this thing to be to be a number in in such a way that if I say Onyeka has let's say I have two cars and seven cars I want if I multiply them together I want it to give me nine cars but at the moment it's not going to give me nine cars because Excel is seeing this as a text right remember text are formatted to the left or right anybody text are formatted to the left or right left left perfect um. I was trying to bring out the um, polling question, but yeah, since you can, you've answered already, so no need. <laughs> Text from to left or right, right, left, right, and um, numbers to the right. So Excel is saying that, Baba, what are you doing? I don't understand, though, man. I think in one and zeros. All this English writing for me, it's not what I don't know. So we want to tell Excel, okay, okay Baba, don't, I mean, Baba, sorry, right? 
I want I want to make sure that what what I see in the cell is two cars, but what is in the cell is actually two. What I'm seeing in the cell is two cars, but what is actually in the cell is two. So the way to do it is to go to home, formatting, right? So when, when you go to numbers here, you see an arrow key here, right? Number format, right? And say that you're going to check out a full set of number formatting options. I click on it here, right? So it gives me the full length of formatting options here, right? If I go to custom, custom, for example, right? I'll, I'll put that together. And I click on zero, right? So let's say the custom format is zero. That means Excel will give me a whole number. Zero will be a whole number. Give me a whole number, right? So this is, this is, um, this is an example. Right, this is a sample, right? But Excel, we say, okay, Excel, I, I don't, I just don't want to see two. I want to see two cars. If I write, if I say, okay, Excel, I, I don't want zero. I want zero cars. Right, zero cars. Excel is not answering me as such, right? But if you notice, when I put a, 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 um. Apostrophe before the letters, right? Zero cars. So Excel, what what I want to see is instead of just putting is instead of just putting um um two, put two cars, even though it's two, right? Put put two cars. So now what is here is actually two, but what we are seeing is two cars. So if I do this plus this. Give me nine cars. Do you understand? So what I've done is that I formatted what I can see in the cell, but in essence, I did not format, I did not format the content of the cell. The content of the cell is still remaining two. What I just did was just to format what I see. So that's why in Excel, when, when working with Excel, you have to be careful that what you are seeing and what is in the cell is the same thing because the way Excel is, is wired, right? You can see something, right? You can see something, but that does not mean that's what is inside, right? I will get that. So let's go to um, um, naming ranges, right? So we'll just do that. Um, should we do naming range? Naming range now. Naming range now. Um, okay, so in Excel, as, as I said, what is what is this? This is B B four, right? This is C four. This is D four, right? Excel reads reads a cell column and row, column and row. But you can you can give you can name a particular cell. To be to mean something different. For example, let's say I want to name this particular cell. This particular cell that I'm I generated here, it is it is cell C5. Right? It's cell C5. But let's say I want to name it, I want to change the name, right? I can come here and change it to let's say I, I, I want to change it to um Bala Blue. Right. So I'm changing this cell C5 to Bala Blue. So Excel now will see this one as Bala Blue. So let's say I want to come somewhere else and quote it. If I click equals to Bala, Bala Blue, right? Excel will give me what is there. So I can name a particular cell. I can even name a particular range. For example, if I come here and I click on this particular range, right? Okay, sorry. Let me, let me do this first. This particular range here, what from B5 to this thing, right? See, it's, it's telling me that I'm highlighting one column, four rows, four rows from one column. That's how Excel saw it. But this one, if you notice, what is seen here is seen is sales 12, sales from 2012, right? Because I have named it, I've named it to sales from 2012, right? So instead of saying I want to add this. Plus this, plus this, plus this, right? I can just say Excel, right? Um, sum sales of 2012. 
and Excel will add everything here because I have named it a particular thing. So that's why sometimes you can look at, can look at somebody's Excel and you say, ah, how come there's, I mean, where is sales to 2012? How can the Excel be adding? For example, the, from the, the other option stuff I, I just showed you. Let's say I'm adding this plus this, plus this, plus this, right? You will see in the formula, you see Bala blue plus C7 plus C7, um, C6 plus C7 plus C8, because it's seen this as Bala blue, not as C stuff, as C5. You understand? So you can, you can name a range, you can name a cell, right? You can even name a table. For example, if I want to name this full entire table, same thing, right? I can just call it table, table, um, manners or something. Or, or, or table man, for example. So if I highlight everything, except we've seen table man. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes, yes, I do. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So now let's open um, the second um, file we have. It's called Excel formulas, Excel formulas. And the password is um, tabs Excel 03. The same thing, just changing it to 03. So this is the... The form, the password for, for the next file I want us to open. Um, it's called um, Excel formulas. Excel formulas. So we'll quickly rush to it, and we'll now go into the formulas proper itself. If we have the open, just say I, 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 I. Are we there? Are we there? Yeah, I'm not seeing anybody commenting. Yeah, we are there. I have not been able to access the file. It looks like there's the guy should please refresh the browser and log in again. Uh, sorry, what what file are you opening? Because I I mean there are there are three folders there. There's financial model folder, there's a VBA folder, there's the Excel folder. Just download the Excel folder. So it's the Excel folder that I'm trying to access that keeps giving the error. That's um, yeah, the Excel folder. The Excel folder. Can you yes. try? Can you try and refresh it again and try and download it? Okay, download. Okay. Download. It's, download. It's signing up. That's a challenge. All right, let me see. I'm signing in my Google, so it's easy to access it first. All right, no problem. Let me keep trying. Maybe it's what I'm using to to access it. Yeah, just Thank just you. yes, just click on the three dot and I just click on download. You have to sign yeah. up or sign up. Okay. Oh, oh, okay, it's asking people to sign up. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. so that's the challenge. Uh, okay, 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 okay. I just I just okay. realized that. Let me let me see if I can remove that. Um, okay, sorry, minute. Um, so try. Okay, so try refresh it and try and download it again. I think you should, you should be able to work with it now. Okay, so you you're welcome. For the rest of us, um, I I just launched a poll question. Um, as we go into formulas, right? How many types of references do we have in Excel? Two. Somebody said two. Only one person has voted. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. Somebody said three. Somebody said two. 
And nobody saying four. Wow. That is sad. Though. Four, four is feeling bad. We have twenty-four on this poll. I mean, on this call. So please, I respect at least I mean, majority of us to um, actually participate. Okay. Okay, so um, from from what we can see, we have different people with different um, different ideologies of on the different kind of thing. So I mean, majority are saying two. Four people said three. Um, let me end it. Um, so we have okay, majority people of, of people said two, but. But in Excel, we have three major types of referencing. We have absolute referencing, relative referencing, and circular referencing. The three kind of referencing that we have in Excel. Absolute referencing, relative referencing, and under relative referencing, we have two types of relative referencing, and we have circular referencing. So in essence, there are four, but um, Majorly, there are three. So if you put three or put four, anyone can be correct, right? But yeah, you, you get the drift, right? And so I will explain how Excel formulas works, right? So Excel formulas, Excel, as I said, Excel sees numbers and data, right? Numbers and text. And when whenever you're engaging Excel, whenever you are, you are engaging Excel with a text, it must be it must, you must use the double quotation marks, right? So if you want to use a text in a formula, you must use the double quotation marks. To use a text in a formula, you must use the double quotation marks, right? If, whenever I want to engage a text in Excel, you must use the double quotation marks. And when, when, when writing formulas in Excel, right, you must be, you must be um, conversant with um, board mass, right? It's it's very funny, but like, yeah, board marks, board marks that we left in primary school, that like, still follows us to Excel, right? So when writing a formula, right, you can write two things and we can give you two different results, right? You can write, you can write two things that give you two different results. For example, if I say um, two plus three times five, right? And so it's, you know, it's, 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 it's giving me 17, right? If I do the same thing again, right? But this time I put the brackets here, right? Or I put the bracket, sorry, in this, in this area here. It gives me a totally different answer, right? So your placement of bracket, so what Excel always does that it, it is normal board math, right? It takes the multiplication first, then, to the sum, right? So like two can do the same thing, just the placement of the brackets. So you have to be very, very, very careful. And in this, um, and I, 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 I already mentioned what false is and true is, that true is one and false is zero, right? Let's not forget that, right? So, I mean, this is just something that for you to note, right? I'm gonna spend time on this because I believe we should all know it, right? Um, or we'll know it as, as time goes on. So if if you see the results, you can just click on view results here, tick this box and the results will um will pop out, right? That's just by the side. So now let's go to Excel formulas, right? Excel formulas. And yeah, we were treating the various kinds of referencing, right? The various kinds of referencing. Let's go, oh, no, let's go to the rules first, right? Then we'll come back to referencing. Let's go to the rules in Excel, right? And I will just list out some, some very important rules that we should never forget in Excel, right? Um, the first one, the first one is that if if you're writing a formula in Excel, a general formula in Excel, 
as much as possible, as much as as much as you can, try and remove, try and remove adding constants to that formula, right? Try and move adding constants to that formula. For example, uh, we have, we have, let's say they ask us to add a, a VAT to our price. Let's say our price is one five, right? And we, we want to add a 20% VAT to our price. So our price, if you can, I don't know if you can see, let me try and expand this, sorry. Um, expand it better, better, bigger, yeah. So I'm making the formula here, right? So let's say we have 1,500 is our price. And I want to add, I want, I want to add a, or I, I, I want to say the, the discount is 20%. What would the discount be? And I do multiply by 20%, right? This is bad practice, very bad, the extremely bad practice in Excel, right? People do it now. Just because people do it does not mean that it is correct, right? It's extremely bad practice. In Excel, for auditing purposes, it's best, it's best to do this. Service charge, 1,500. Discount, 20%, right? Then, then the charge, I mean, the selling price or the discount, discount price or something, right? Or the discount now will not be this multiplied by this. It's better to see Excel um, reference. So age this, age this. So it makes it easier because let's say you want to not change the 20 to 30%, yeah. You can do it easily without having to go to the formula. So the formula is not changing. What's it changing are the constant driving the formulas, right? So when writing an Excel, right, it's, 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 it's good for you to be logical and systematic, right? So never, never do, never do uh, as much as possible. I mean, apart from when, when it's like one or zero, I mean, there are, there are obviously times, obviously there are always exceptions to the rules, right? But as much as much as you can, as much as you can, as much as you can, always, 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 every time, always avoid writing constant in the cell. The second rule that guides formulas in Excel is that ensure that your formula for a particular thing is constant. So, for example, uh, hmm. There's an example here, but I don't know if it will be because I've not touched the formula, but yeah, let's just work with it, right? So, for example, now we have, let's say we have, um, let me take this and yeah, okay. So, we have gen, we have um, these items, right? Baba Blue, Goody Goody, Tom Tom, right? So, we know, oh, for Baba Blue, we sold 1,200. In January, in February, we sold 1,200. What we want to calculate here is the percentage change. And the formula for percentage change is, is new, new minus divided by old minus one, basically. So that means that, I mean, leave the, leave the formula. The formula, is not the, the formula is not the main thing I'm trying to teach here. I'm trying to teach consistent in formula, right? So this is the main thing I'm trying to teach, right? So in Excel, you should be able to drag your formula from beginning to end. And it works. And I should not say any value. Some people will have one formula here because this does not go with them. Do not put on that formula here again. Oh, uh, you know, and in one particular rule, doing a particular function, you have like four different five formulas. That shows that your your work is not auditable. It's not it's not crips, right? So you should have to write an Excel formula that will cover everything from start to finish. From start to finish. And the formula we will use here is if error. And I will not, I will not, touch, I will not touch it here until we go to the main, to the main thing. I'm just going to give us rules that, that should guide writing formulas in Excel. Then now let's talk about referencing. In Excel, there are three kinds of referencing. Absolute referencing, relative referencing, and secular referencing. For, for um, absolute referencing, let's start with this. Right? Let us assume we want to calculate the discount price in, in, in January, right? And the formula, the formula we we'll use here is price, okay, price multiplied by one plus 
I mean, or one minus, one minus discount, discount rate, sorry. So this, this is what we want to use, right? Price, that is price multiplied by, sorry, multiplied by one minus discount rate, right? So this big, because we are giving a discount of 10%, instead of, instead of charging 60, we'll charge 54, right? So the way, the way to know that your formula is consistent is that you should be able to drag it down without any error. You can drag it from formula one to formula zero without any error. So if I click on drag down, what is, what, what is this doing? It's doing price times one minus discount rate. This is correct, right? Is this one correct? This is correct. Is this one correct? This is correct. So we, we have been able to do this perfectly well without fix airing without um, formatting it in any way without doing any kind of reference in any way right that's one right let's let's try it with this way now in this in this way however we have the same discount rates right but instead of the discount rates being in every column the discount rate is just in one in in, in one place 10 percent excel formulas that is um tabs excel 03 Tabs Excel 03, that's the formula. Tabs Excel 03. Let me just put it here. Tabs Excel 03. Yeah. So now, for this, however, the price, the discount is remaining constant. The discount is not moving, it's, the, it's remaining constant. So if we use the same thing, right, that is, for example, equals to, the price, I mean, multiplied by bracket one minus the discount rate now is up here, right? Discount rate, enter, right? Babulu gave us 54, right? If we drag down, pressing this, just pressing, double click on this, we can see that we're having various answers. Why? Who can tell me why? How come we're having error here? This one we did the same thing. With the same thing we did. How can we have an error here? We're going to have a minus six thousand, two thousand six hundred and fifty here. Who can tell me why? Anybody? Anybody? Any takers? Oh, you can just try, please. Anybody? Ah, nobody wants to try. It's because you are um not referencing the percentage so it's once you dragged it down this formula continued to reference what was above the value okay awesome that's perfect right the reason the reason the reason is that i said excel excel things very linearly right so in this right excel says k b7 h5 right in excel's mind if you're coming down excel is bringing this thing to b8 but also bringing this one towards to h6 as as i as you again excel what is we doing what we just bringing it down bringing it down bringing it down because excel thinks in one way linear for fashion so we have to tell excel excel ah that's not what i meant to what i really mean is that although i want this price to be coming down that means i want for baba blue give me the price for baba blue but this discount this discount is not changing it's remaining the same discount will not change come rain rain or high water so excel I want this discount to be fixed, fixed in this, fixed in this particular H5. That means this, this discount should not change, right? So we want to always do what, what, what you call absolute reference discount. We want to absolute reference the global discount. That means global discounts should not change, even if the prices are changing. So what we we'll do here is press F4. F4 is if you if, if press F4 on a, on a particular cell, right? So I, I came to the formula bar and I press F4, right? And what happened that you can see that you can see two dollar signs here. Dollar sign on the H and dollar sign in front of the Y. I mean, in, 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 in front of the five. So there is dollar sign in front of the H, a dollar sign in front of the five. So basically what Excel is saying 
what Excel is saying is that um the I am I am the dollar sign is a is a is it's is a sign for um reference or fixing, right? So Excel fix don't allow this H to move, don't allow this five to move. So no 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 matter what I'm doing, remain in remain in um in in H5. So if I drag it down, what you will notice is that although this one is moving down, this H5 is remaining constant. So Excel has seen that I have fixed this, right? It's not going to move. I am fixing this to H5. So dollar sign in front of H means fix fix the role. Dollar sign in front of five means fix the column. So when we put dollar sign in, in, in front of H and five, it means fix both the role and fix both the column. Do you understand? Do you understand? Anybody? Are we, are we together? Have I lost you guys? Yes, I got you. Okay. No, okay. So let's let's do it this way. All right. So um as soon we have okay, let me just put it this way. And we'll just do a sample together. So we um so let's say we have this, 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 um 150, 25, 15. Right. So please watch me carefully. Right. And let's say we want to add this two, right? Two, 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 two. I'll give you a very straightforward example. Let's say we want to add both of them together. What would this this plus this, right? And we can drag it down. At an Excel we see that it's the same, it's the same formula. We are basically just adding everything. This Excel is seen, so Excel saw F27 G27. When I when I drag this down, right? Press I just double click on this. Excel will just move the formula downwards, move it downwards. So Excel say, ah, okay, ah, I understand the logic. You are just moving this down, 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 down. Right? So say Excel, good boy, clap for yourself. Now imagine this two is up here, and I say multiply. What I want you to do now is to add everything by two. So if I do this plus this, right? That's what I want to do, right? If I click down, if I drag it down, right? Excel is not adding this thing by two again. See, Excel is, is logical, right? So because the two is up here, right? For this one, Excel automatically moved the, in the, in the next formula, Excel moved everything one step down. Next one moves everything one step down. But that's not what we want. We want that, as as this one is going down, 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 we don't want this two to move because this two is a constant. So what we want to tell Excel is that Excel, I want you to lock this rule and lock this column. Lock this rule. I'm sorry, lock this rule and lock this column. That means it should not move from two. From our understanding, how do you lock a rule? How do you lock a, a rule? What is rule here? Is rule G or is rule 26? Is rule G? Or is row 26? Anybody? Is it row G or the row 26? G. G. 26. 26. So don't forget, um, if, if, if you guys see my video, roll is like this. Roll, roll, roll. Your boats, uh, you're rolling your boats. You're rolling like this. I mean, roll. This roll. So roll are numbers, column are this thing, right? So we say Excel, I want you to lock the roll, right? So I want you to lock column column 26. I mean, row 26, right? And the way to, to lock a roll is by putting a, do a dollar sign in front of the rule and i say excel I, I also want you to lock the column as well that means i don't want this thing to move row wise or column wise it should just remain the same way just remain in this two don't move left or move right right so i've told excel even though this one is moving no this one should not move from two so i've i've done that if i not drag it down you can see that see although this one is moving the two remains constant the two remains constant. Two remains constant. So this will call absolute referencing. That means that you are you are referencing a, this cell absolutely. That means that is I don't want Excel to um, use intuition or use thinking. Excel just keep on, just keep on moving, just keep on moving, just keep on, just keep on staying with the twenty six. Right? You understand? 
The next, the next, the next kind of referencing I would like to show us is uh, so I've, I've explained absolute reference, right? So now what I want to explain is um, uh, absolute reference is one, then relative reference is second one. Now, assuming, assuming back to the example, right? We have January price and we have. We have February price, right? Or let's say we have January discount and February discounts, right? So the price for the price for January still remains the same. The, I mean, this is the price, right? Or this is the price for both January and February, right? But the thing is that the discount for January is different from the discounts for March. I mean, for February, right? The price is the same, but the discount varies. So, for example. If we do price equals to the price here, multiplied by this formula, right? One minus discount rate. What is discount for? What is discount for um for January? What is discount for January? Anybody? Ten percent. Fifty percent, right? So as 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 I said, we will not put that fifty. We will not have fifty percent. We we'll reference fifty percent here, right? Fifty percent, right? Then we we'll close our brackets and press enter. So Excel has done fifty percent in January. Now remember, I said that for for an Excel for an Excel um, function, Excel formula, you must write a formula in such a way that your formula is the same thing for I mean the same thing across board. So that means it doesn't say you write a formula for January, you write a formula for February. No, no, in the same formula you write for January to uh, December. In such a way that if you copy this formula and you just cop copy it and paste it everywhere. The formula should give you the same figure. This um, should give you correct answers. But obviously, this is wrong because even for us, for us, right? Let's start. Let's start with. Um, let's start with um, B seven. B seven. The the issue is that if we drag this this way, it gives us a zero. Why? Because although although our our price, our, our discount is speaking correctly because, for example, remember, January is price of January multiplied by discount of January. February is, I mean, price, the price is standard. Standard price times January discount. February, standard price times February discount. So the standard price, is it meant to change or is it meant to be constant? Anybody? Constant. 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 So we know that for for the price now, the standard price should be the same thing, right? So if you press F four year and we lock it, right? Watch me, right? So our our standard price should not change, right? But our discounts should change as we move, right? As we move to the left. So if I drag it this way, is it correct? Let me let me hide this. Sorry, let me hide this for us to see. Sorry, I'm 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 getting somewhere. Just will follow me. Um, okay. Now, this we said standard price is the same, and this comes to change. Is this correct? Any everybody? Is this correct? Does it look correct? Yes, right. It looks correct. It looks correct, Abby. Right, but we will not know if it's correct until we say, ah, it's nice. We have gotten our answer, right? But we said that we must be able to drag this thing across board and give us and it must give us the same answer. So if if we drag this, if 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 we copy the formula here and we paste it everywhere, how come it's wrong? How come how come some things are wrong? What is wrong now? What is wrong? So do you know what? That means that it's not it's, it's not complete. Although it's correct to dragging it to the left, it's not correct when you bring it down. So there's an error. So we cancel this formula. See. It's not correct. That means we are not we are not referencing it very well. For example, if we drag this thing down, how come it's giving us value? Because the discount is moving. Can you see? Hey, sorry, this is like the base of Excel. So I, I like us to omit our mic. Please, if I omit your mic, if you're not anywhere that's noisy, um, please by all means. All right. So I, I, I can get. I mean, if you're in, if you're in another place, please submit the mic, right? 
Okay, for example, now let's start. Let me let me start again, right? So we say that this thing we should not lock it totally. So what do we want to achieve? We want to achieve that this this standard price, when we come down, we want the standard price to also come down, Abby. Yeah. Right? So what we want that the standard price should be coming down this way, right? When we drag it to the left, do we want this? Do we want the standard price to move to the left too as well? Or do we want the standard price to still remain in the same column? Anybody? I want it to come to the left. Oh, I mean... Since this is the standard price, it should so, apply everywhere. Yeah, so that means that we want the standard price to remain in this column. The standard price is not moving from this column. It's the same column. So, like, if you drag it to the left... We don't want the standard price to come to C because nothing is in C. We want the standard price. The standard price is in B, column B. It must remain in column B. Do you understand? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It can. It, it can. It can move rows. That means it can be. It can either be row seven, row eight, row nine, row ten. But it must be in column B, sha. What What matters is that is in column B. It can move. It can move rows, but it must remain in column B. Do you understand? Yes. So, if if we want this to remain in column B, what are we, where are we going to put the, the dollar sign? I'm going to put dollar sign in front of B, in front of seven, or in, in front of both of them. In front of B, in front of seven, or in front of both of them. If we want the star price to remain in column B. B and seven. What's it? I think just B. Yes. Yeah, I said B and seven. So someone said B and seven. Someone said, I mean, some some people said B. Because remember, what we want to do, we want to lock, we want to lock the column. And column is what? Lettered. Mm -hmm. Rows and numbers. So we want to say, see, we want Excel. Don't don't allow this move from column B. It can move, it can move from row seven, row eight, row nine. But it must remain in column B. So we put it only in where the column is. We put the dollar sign only where the column is. So in in that way, right? Just um just watch. If I if if I put the column only in column B, that is here. If, if I put the dollar sign only in column B, right? So I come here and I put the dollar sign only in column B. What will happen is that see, see at at every point in time. Although it's coming down, it's, it's still remaining in B. Even if I drag mm -hmm. it left again, it's still remaining where? In column B. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So we've gotten the price correctly. The other issue now is the discount. Right? For the discount, what do we want to achieve? Right? We want it to remain in row five, even though it moves columns. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and I know, I know what I will, I know what I will use. Sorry, I know what I will use. Let me use a, let me, let me use a, a, a separate example. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now we know our multiplication timetable, right? We know our multiplication timetable, right? So that what we use. Yeah. Okay, so now this is our multiplication timetable, right? This is this. And this is this, right? Okay. Now, what we want to do is to complete this more timetable, and this will teach us about referencing. This will, I think, this will be like the easiest way for to relate with. So, in 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 more current timetable, we know we, we all know what we want to achieve, right? So, one times one that is this times this is one, one times one two, one times two, something like this. You understand, right? So, what I want to do, I want to do this multiply by this, right? Right, that's what we want to achieve, right? And yeah. what so if we that if you copy the formula all the way down, obviously we know this now. We know that the formula is wrong because this is not result in primary school. You don't teach us one times one times ten is three three hundred and twenty six thousand. This is not result in primary school. So we know that the formula is wrong. <laughs> obviously wrong, extremely wrong. So what we want to achieve in this formula, we want to say that see, as I as I'm dragging this formula. I want, I want, let me change colors. Let me change it to green. Okay. So what, what I want to achieve in my molecular timetable is that 
as I'm dragging my formula, right? I want the formula to remain. I want I want this moving from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but I want it to remain on this roll. You should not leave this roll. While this, I want it to remain on this column without leaving this column. Do you understand? Yes. Right. So let's start with so let's start with this first one. This one. So what what do we want to achieve in this one? We want to we want to make sure that this one, right? Although, although, or, although this one is coming down, one is coming to roll one, two, three, four, five. I don't want it to be moving this way. I want it to remain in the same column. With, I mean, I want it. I want it to remain in the same column, but it can shift rows. Do you understand? Yes. So, if we want to make it remain in the same column, what are we going to put? Where will we put our dollar sign? If we want to remain in the same column, remember column. Where would we put our dollar sign? Before B. Before B. Before B. Awesome. Right? Then multiplied by this one. Yeah. In this one, what do I want to achieve? I want this one. Do I want this one to remain in the same in the same role or in the same column? The same role. Same role. The same role. That means it can change column. That means it can go from C to D to E to F, but it should always remain in this same rule so when i want to lock it where will i put my dollar sign in front of c or in front of 37 front of 37 right so now if i copy this formula right and i paste it everywhere is this is, is this the that we taught you in school yeah it looks yes. like it right yeah. because because we are able to know where to lock and where not to lock right where to reference where to do Row referencing, what to do column referencing is very important. Continue the bit of Excel. Most people formula crashes because they don't know where to put the last sign. Hey, should I put the last sign here or here or that can just stop everything you have, right? Please, you, perm you permit me, we'll end a bit late. So it's already 12 10, we're in about 12 30, and 12 30 will, will be done. Obviously, we cannot finish everything today. Of, I mean, I knew from the beginning, but we'll just, um, I mean, if 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 we start for any other session, you can skip the first hour. Because first of all, we will talk about this, but from from to Saturday, I'll be sticking to functions from the second hour. Anywhere we stop in the basic, we stop in the basic and go to fun functions from the second hour. That's what I'll do from next from next session. So you can skip the first hour, second hour you can you can join. Um, so let's go to circular reference. Circular reference is as I said, that the the absolute referencing, relative referencing, circular reference. A circular reference, right? Is for example, let's say um, we have Febo and Oki. Okay. What I want to do is add both of them together, right? These two. That we want to do, as simple as that, right? But if I make a mistake and I do something like this, instead of, instead of adding, let's say this total, total, what I want to get is equals to this plus this, right? That's what I want. Imagine I do plus. B6. It, it will tell me that I have a circular reference. That means that I am doing A plus B plus C inside C. Like it's like it's circular. It's like the N and the chicken. Did the N come first or the chicken come first? Right. So as much as possible, you must always try not to have circular reference put inside your inside your um your formulas, right? Try not, not, not to have circular reference inside formulas, but if at all you have circular reference, let's say you open your 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 formula and say, ah, there's circular reference inside this, inside this um, there's an activity we have. Okay, but we may not be it. Um, you have you have a circular reference inside your um uh, formula. You have a circular reference inside your formula. Like how oh, how how do I sort it out? Right. You go you go to formulas, click on error checking, and click on circular reference. And it tells you what the circular reference is. You know, say, oh, okay, do you know what the circular reference is because of um I'm adding um it's like, it's like I'm doing chicken and egg situation. So I remove this B6, and if I come here, you see I don't have any circular reference again. Right. So circular, circular reference is what you should not have, right? You can have absolute referencing, you can have relative referencing, but circular referencing you shouldn't have. Do you understand? So let's open our third document quickly and let's see how many fun functions we can cover. 
um, the dot document is called Excel functions. Excel functions. And the, and the passcode is tabs Excel 02. Excel functions. So stop sharing my screen. Excel functions. There's Excel functions. Uh, Yep, Excel functions. Uh, we have quite a lot. We have about two. If you are there, let me hear you say it. Yeah. Just let me know you are there. Sorry. The password is tabs Excel 02. It's similar to what um the other for other um Excel O2 instead of um three or one as the previous ones. Okay, are we there? Okay, in, in, okay, uh, uh, can I, can I start? Okay, so um, for one, for one minute, I'm going to share my entire screen. One minute, I'll share my entire screen, uh, just for one minute. Um, yeah, can we see? Can we, can we also see my screen as well? No, it's very tiny. Oh, my screen. screen edge. Okay, sorry. Me. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, what I have here are 27 Excel, um, there are more than 27 actually. But let's just say about 27, because there are some I lump them together up. But I have about 27 major Excel functions that are here. And I believe that if if you learn all these 27, all, all of the 27, right? There's there's nothing you cannot do in Excel. Obviously, there are more, right? For example, um, let me show you. Let me show you my yeah. These are can I see my screen now? Yes. Yeah. So this is my this is my Excel um, folder, right? I have at the moment I have about two hundred and four functions, right? That I plan to teach. Obviously, I cannot teach two hundred and four functions, right? It's, it's not possible. These are these are, are a lot, right? So you you can't say I know the Excel functions because the more you know, the more the more and more are coming out and it helps simplify simplify tools. Like they are a lot. See, they are, they are a lot, right? Um. But what I want to do today is that from this this lot that I have, right, I selected the top twenty thereabouts. That I believe that with this with this top twenty, if you have this top twenty, right, you should be good to go, right. And what now I will I will ask everybody is that um, you should please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, from next month I'm going to be releasing um social videos on each of these 204 functions on how you can apply them right so there'll be there'll be nothing less than two minutes each or three minutes each so in case you are lost okay how do I use function or and um, what what about this function you can just go there and you say oh okay this is the function and just click one apply it right and I will also talk about how chat GPT can help help right um in case you don't know some functions you can just really just just, chat, chat, just explain the function to chat GPT it will tell you what to do. I'm like, okay, and you just copy it and paste, right? The words move very, very fast. So of killing yourself, right? Learning everything, right? But once you know the basics, right? You can apply, right? So let's start with some function. Yeah? But let's go to some function. Let's go to some function. Some function is very simple, very easy, right? It's, it's 
well, very, very easy thing, right? And you, to, to some, right, there are two ways to some. I mean, as I said, in Excel, there are over 500 and there are 1,001 ways to do 1,001 things. The first way to some, which is this is just equals to this plus this. I want to sum everything in the budget of Ministry of Education, right? I'm just this plus this plus this, right? So to start the formula with equals to, right? Equals to then this plus this plus this plus this, enter, right? That's that's basically sum, right? And there's a way to drag your formula from one place to another, right? So you can drag a formula from the left to the right. Excel has Excel has what we call left to right consistency, right? So if you if I highlight everything here and I press Control R, everybody press Control R on your, on your laptop, Control R, what you will see is that it, it automatically highlights, it automatically copies the formula in the left area all the way to the right. Yeah. So if, if you just press Control R, yeah. it highlights it, right? And, 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 and another way to um, another way to sum is by just highlighting the required cells. Are we together? Are we together? Yeah, I believe we're yeah. together. And, and, and another way to sum is by highlighting the required cells and pressing, I'm going to write it. Uh, okay, I can't write it because I have locked the sheet. Right, alt plus sum, alt and sum. So if I do this and I press alt sum, alt and sum, you can see, alt and sum. So just click on the cells and I press alt and sum, automatically add it for me. Right. So using that, I, I would like guys to do number two, number three, and number four quickly, 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 quickly. And I mean, I put a check mark here to, so you will know if you are correct or not, if you are correct or not. So everybody, let's quickly do it using using odd sum. If you are done, it just says done, and there's a price for the person that that I mean that finishes first. Please, how where do I get sum from? Odd and equals to sorry. So you click on the required cell odd and equals to. So um for example i said just come here and all just highlight only the cell the cell is locked so you, you cannot touch any other, any, any other cell so just um only just click on the area and alt i mean um because to some and you should be able to get it i've i've have you finished number two i finished number three and number four, let's see who can number four as well. Done. Okay. I I I I don't number four as well. If if I don't number four, try number five. If I don't number four, so let's 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 do let's do let's do. I like us to get our hands dirty. We have about fifteen minutes to go. Why is number four frowning? Ah, number four is frowning. <laughs> Peleo, hey, that means you're not getting it. So, if if number four is frowning, you're not getting it. Number four is frowning, you're not getting it. I mean, everybody should get number one, number two, number three. So basically, this is the budget for edu Ministry of Education. This is the budget for Ministry of Health, this is budget for Ministry of Defense. What I want us to do here, number four, is to consolidate this budget together. So basically, it costs for education. I'll leave education, I'll leave the rest. It costs to, then you go to Ministry of Education, click, click on Ministry of Education Total. Yeah, enter, and you press Ctrl R. Yeah. That's what you're meant to do here. So same thing for health, same thing for defense, then for total, you sum it together. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, Fitz, Fitz and Dio, are you guys done with one and four? I mean, one to four, sorry. I'm doing four now. Okay. Um, Dio, are you done with one to four? Fitz, don't want to four. Badass. Um, yep, okay. So, not with our time. Those those that will join next week and the subsequent week they will enjoy because I think I'll be more. I, th I think I will just go the overview and go into the functions. I'll just make it 
make it that way. So um, for this, it's simple. Just highlight everything and press Alt equals to as simple as that. For Ministry of Defense, same thing, press Alt equals to simple as that. For this one, Ministry of Health, you link it to total Ministry of Health. For Ministry of Defense, you link it to the Ministry of Defense. That is here. Then you highlight two of them, move it to the right, and press Control R, and it copies the formula for you. Then for total, you highlight everything again and press Alt equals two, and you have your consolidated budget. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So for this, right, there are different ways to do it. Remember. So this, what what, what that we want to add the we want to add the budget for Q1, Q2, Q3 for Ministry of Education. We also want to add all of them again, so as well here. So we want to add, we want to add this column. We want to add all these rows, right? And easy way to do it is to highlight everything. Watch me, everybody, please. Highlight everything. So I highlighted all the numbers, everything. I just press Alt equals to. Excel is smart enough to know that I want to sum it. Just highlight everything and just press Alt equals to once with a single stroke. Everything, everything is completed. Is that simple enough? That's simple enough, Abby. Okay, so we are, I believe that is simple enough. Um, we we'll go from the simple to the complex. So let's go to if. Let's go to if, 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 right. So um, the if function is for, the if function helps us to um, logically um, give commands to Excel. So for example, let's say this were the marks of these students in mathematics. You can see Omega got 70, this is, is, is a good guy, right? We have Baba Tunde Shawari got 45, Faus 55, Elion Zugabok 65, this, right? And, but the pass mark is 50. So we want to Excel, Excel. If, and Excel has syntax for, or for, for all of its functions, right? So equals to if, so if press equals to if, enter you see the syntax for if this is syntax for if is what's the test what's the value if true if that test is true what's the value if that test is false it's as simple like that let me explain so i think that if if this person scores less than 50 let the, what should uh, so the, the the test is if this is if files the good guy scores Less than, less than pass the pass mark is what less than fifty, which is here, right? Less than this, right? Comma. What should I do? If it's less than fifty, I want you to say the person. If it's less than fifty, did the person pass or fail? Anybody? If it's less than fifty, the pass mark is fifty. Yeah. Fail, have you? So. Put yeah. Fail. Yeah. If it's above fifty, then comma, see comma. Let's move to the next one. Value, value if false. If that means if it does not fail, what has it done? It has passed now. I mean, so it says if it's less than fifty, give me fail. If not, give me what? Pass. You understand? It's like equals to if if this is less than fifty. If 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 the person's mark is less than fifty, that means the person failed, Dabi. If the person if the, otherwise the person passed, Dabi. Do I yeah. am gonna enter? Why is this an error? Why is this an error? Anybody? I thought I I taught you earlier. And in, I, I in, inverted comma is not there. Yes. So please remember that anytime you are you are writing a text in in, in, in an Excel, right? Always make sure that it is in inverted com. I mean, in that quotation mark, right? So the value, the value if true is is fail, be fail, right? This, this is what we had before. The issue was that Excel Excel does not read num um, letters like that. So for Excel to know it's a letter, you must put the double quotation marks in front and before it. So Excel. If it's this thing, put fail, 
I've, I've, I've ever seen people talking and say, um, if, 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 if you can see my video, say, oh, oh, I'm not like that. It's like Excel, Excel language, putting text in quotes, right? So put fail in quotes and put pass as well in quotes because that's, that's the way Excel will see that is a text you're putting there. Fail, pass, and press enter. Are we together? Are we together? Yeah. Is this formula is this formula all inclusive? That means if I drag the formula down, will I still get my answer? Yes, you should. Okay. You say yes, I should. Uh -huh. But how come this one is 48 is pass? Because it said the pass mark is 50, Abby. How come 48 is pass? My own 48 is fail. Uh -huh. What do you do in your formula? The obvious something you did, did from... I did if C C eight is less than C seven, comma C comma. No 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 C no. It's, it's not it's not C seven. It meant to be G G seven. G seven is where our pass mark is fifty. Oh okay okay mm -hmm. okay. okay. G eleven. So anybody 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 can tell me why we get a private session and ask me any question you want to ask on Excel. Anybody. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, gone. Um, <laughs> the reason why, the reason why it's not, it's not like that is because remember, every everything I'm teaching you is all together. Look at, look, look at where the pass mark is now. Yeah. What should we have done? We should have thought Excel, yeah. Excel. We must lock it. Absolute reference. reference. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right, after it should be a constant, right? G, this G, um, um, seven. So what we come here is we lock, we put dollar sign both in G and both in seven. That means Excel don't like pass, right? And again, our formula is not correct because the pass mark is fifty. So that means somebody that gets fifty should also pass, right? Yes. Fifty should also pass, right? So if it's less than or equals to. I mean, less, less than 50 pass, right? Do you understand? So it's, it's simple. Do you understand? It's as simple as that, right? So that means everybody pass. I mean, minus, apostle, low, Do you understand? Simple. Let's go down. No, please take that again. That less, um, less than equals to. Two. Okay. I'll, I'll explain it here. I'll explain it here in this next one. Okay. So now, now let's say, let's say we have another, another thing now. So we say, this is, um, let's say the person got 150. I, I, permit me, the person got 150. And um, okay. so the first, now we want to combine two, fu two functions together. We want to combine the if function and the and function. The if function and the and function makes it easy for us to, you know, yeah, yeah, we had only one logical test, Abby. The logical test was if you pass 50, if you get 50 or above 50, you pass, even if you fail. It's simple. But what if what if I want to say for you to pass? Um let me add, let me just do something here, right? You guys can just copy exactly what I'm doing. I just created a new column for English, right? Um and I say, and I say, you must pass. And let's say I put 50 year, um, 20 year, 70 year, 40 year, and 20 year. And right, this one, 50 year. Okay. Oh, no, this is 60 year. So please, just, just watch me right now. This this is what I give you, right? I give you this, right? Now, but there's a I want to put a yes, the recording will be on my YouTube channel. So please make sure you subscribe. It's good, it's going to be on my YouTube channel. Let me copy the YouTube link and put it here. Please make sure, make sure you subscribe. Please, 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 please. It's going to be, it's going to be on my YouTube channel and many other things will be, will be there as well. I mean, I said those 204 functions will be there. So just subscribe and when the channel, I mean, when 
when the stuff are up, you'll be able to see it. Um, at the moment, it's more of my fifth, but more, more to be posted as you go on. Um, we have four more minutes to wrap up. So I will just, if, and I will do VLOOKUP and I will do chat GPT and we'll be, we'll, we'll be done. The next, other functions will cover it next lecture, next section. So um, now, imagine, imagine I say, I want to have two conditions as opposed to one condition. That means that the person must, Okay, I, I won't have it here, so sorry. Um, sorry, I mean, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so if you just come down, if you come down here, go to where you have if or, if or, let's let's use if or, this, right, okay, perfect. We have, we have it here. Now, assuming we have something as this, right? The same guys, that's called a mass, that's called an English, right? But I said that, see, you know what? You, for you to pass, you must just pass either math or English. You must pass math or English, not math and English. You must pass math or English. For example, let's let's use our head, right? So this guy now, this guy that failed failed math. Okay. So okay, sorry. Let me put one like this now. Now this guy that failed math, I I've changed to sixty-five. This guy he failed math, right? But he passed English. This. This guy failed mass. Who failed mass? Mass mass cut up is 50, right? Uh 47. Okay. So now this guy failed mass, right? Because it was the cutoff is was 50, 50, 50 marks, right? But for English, what's the cutoff for English? 45. The guy passed English, but failed mass. In our results, because we said you, you must either pass mass or English. Will he pass or fail? Anybody? Will he pass yes. or fail? He will pass yes. because he, at least he fulfilled one thing, right? So I want us to observe how this form formula works. Equals to if, I said we want to mix two functions together, if function and all function, right? The if function help us to say, if this, if this is not this, he fail. Right, or if this is not this, it pass just one logical test. But here, we want to have two logical tests and say if you pass mass or pass English, give him pass, if not, give him fail. That want to do right. So, we'll do if they will not put or we did if then we put or right, if and all. So, now if you can see here, you can see logical one, logical test one. So, all give us more options to have more logical tests. So we're going to say that if, if, if this, if this guy, right, passes or gets less than the cutoff mark for mass. Remember mass, I'm going to log this, right? If this one gets less than this, right? Or if you get less than that, or if he gets, if for English now as well, get less than 45, yeah? I'll lock the 45 as well, right? I cannot close this bracket because that's our logical test. We have two logical tests. The first one is that, is it that, is that a pass mass? E or, or, is that if, if, if your math score, you're less than this, or you're this, you're less than that. You're, you're less than 45, that means that you will fail. If not, you will pass. And I put it in inverted column and I press enter. So that's, do you understand this? Do you understand this? Or you don't understand? <laughs> do you understand? Understood. Well, you guys understood. One person didn't understand. Any other person understand? Anybody else? Anybody else? Understand though. Yes, okay. So let's let's do it again. Okay, let me use and and function. And then it's easier to explain with and. So let's say I say that before you can pass, you must pass mass and English, like Wayek, right? Before you can say you pass Wayek, you must pass mass and pass English. 
right? You must pass maths and pass English. If you fail maths, if, if you pass max, but fail English, you will, you will, you will, you will not, do, do not, they will not consider you as someone that passed. So for example, let's say the guy got 665 six, in maths, he passed maths, because the pass mark of maths is 50. But let's say for English, he got 30. What's want to say that this guy failed? Because you must pass maths and pass English for you to consider, for you to consider as a, Stone that pass, right? So what I will write is equals to if and if and that means that if you pass math, that means if this is great, if if you pass math, comma, logical test is that and you pass English. <laughs> and you pass and you pass English, right? You close the brackets. If you pass math and you pass English. Right, then that means you pass. If not, that means you failed. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes. And I will lock my cutoff mark. Yes. Uh, yes. And I drag it down, and you can see that this one's although it passed, you can make although it passed or Although he passed Max because he failed English, he failed. Right? This one, he passed English, but he failed Max. This one, one is 50 because we, we, we should have put equals to 50 as well. Equals to in our formula. If it's greater than or equals to 50. Right? So this that's, that's how you do so, um, if, right? So we've covered so, some. We've covered if. Um, I would like us to cover um, one more. And um, one more, 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 which one should we cover? I mean, we the most impactful one and call it a T. Um, I will do go sick. Let me do go sick, right? Let's do go sick and we call it a T. Now, um, so for go sick, right? So, for example, right, let's say that like, this, this, uh, this is revenue of these people. I mean, revenue of, let's say, Onyeka's incorporation. And this is the cost of Onyeka incorporation. And this is the margin. That is this minus this dollar cent. Simple, very simple mathematics. Now, let's say I say, I ask you, ah, um, name for somebody's name here. Uh, victory, right? Victory, what, 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 will, what will revenue have to be? For gross margin to be 100. Let's say I want to make gross margin 200. How high will revenue need to climb for gross margin to be 200? Right. So basically, I want to change this to this is my gross margin to 200. But I want to see what gross margin will need to be for my gross, my, my gross margin to be 200. Right. What, what I will have to do is very simple. I go to data. Right. It's, it's, it's basically, I, I go to data. And in this area here, you see what if analysis. Can you see my cursor? You see what if analysis. What if analysis? If I click on the what if analysis here, under under this um, in my data tab here, what if analysis, and I click on go seek. Right. So now Excel is asking me now. So I, I, I'm telling Excel, Excel, I want my gross margin to be 200 by changing my revenue. That's what I want. So I, I want to see, I, I want gross margin to be 200, but I want to do this by changing revenue. So Excel will say, set cell. That means what cell do you want to set? I want to set my gross margin cell. Yeah, I click on gross margin, right? And what do I want to set my gross margin to? I want my gross margin to be 200. It's okay, Excel so say, okay, that's nice. And by changing what cell? I said by, cha by changing revenue. So change revenue, right? To ensure that my gross margin is 200. If I click on OK, OK, you see, my revenue has changed to 545 and my gross margin is now 200. Do you understand? So now let's do a quick, a, a quick example. If I say, for example, now, this is, these are the, these are the salaries of these three people. Right. And here what we have is salary to salary to revenue. Right. So if I want to change, if I want this salary to revenue ratio to be 21, right? 
I want this from to go from from 19 to 21, and I want to do that by changing Onyeka's salary. What would Onyeka's salary be? Let's let, let's try. I want to change this to 21 percent instead of 19 percent, and I want to do this by changing Onyeka's salary. What will Onyeka's new salary be? Let's try using go seek. I mean, wow, I must, I'm going to get the answer. What, what, what will Onyeka salary be? Anybody? I'm not hearing you. 11,390. Mm. To get 21% as salary to revenue ratio. Mm. Um, I got 59.45. 59.45. Okay. Who else? As is, is that what everybody got? You guys, let's try it now. It's very simple, very simple. Is that what you got? Anybody else? Anybody else? Wow, only one person. Did you guys understand it? Sophie, Denike, Benedict, Solomon, Tim Tokwe, Titi Lokwe, Soluani, Rosemary, Jonas. What is it? 59.45. 59.45. What did the first person get? Sorry. 59.45. Okay, no, no, no. so let's do it together, right? It's very simple, right? I come to what if analysis on that data, click on go seek. And I want to set this value here, right? To 21%, right? By changing Onyeka salary, right? I click on okay, and voila, 59.45. So it changes Onyeka salary to number 45, and it changes my revenue to 21%. Do you understand? It's, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward. There are many more things that we can cover, but we have run out of time. So I'll just show you how ChatGPT can help, right? And we close out from this, from this, right? Uh, when you can see my full screen, please let me know. Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay, so for example, now I will be very quick on this. Now we have, assuming you don't know the formula, right, of anything, and I mean, and I'm telling you this because, um, because we, I cannot cover everything in this lecture. Obviously, like you can see, like we did not cover because we had to skip many many things. We just we had we had just two hours, and we now we spent well over two hours thirty minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so for example, now let's say, um. Let me take, okay, let me do this, right? So let's say, now, I want to write a formula. Like you're thinking, oh, go down the formula. I want to write a formula that says that if the, if, if there is, if this text here includes video, give me yes. If not, give me no, right? So that means, until I say Excel, please, write a formula. I mean, I want to write a formula that if there's video in the text here, right, put yes here. If there's no video, for example, edit video, it should be yes. Admin tax should be no. Record the video should be yes. Team meeting should be no. Video script should be yes. Right? I want to write a formula. But on the car court, how will I do it? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Let's say I'm, I try. Let me, uh, maybe I'm, I, I want to write a formula. If, if, if this, right, is equals to, um, is equals to video, right? Um, give me, give me, um, yes. Just, 
just follow me. If not, give me no, right? And you give me no. Ah, uh -uh. but the video here now. Ah, uh, oh God. How do I write this formula? <laughs> oh, excellent. How do I write formula? Don't, don't stress yourself. I, what I did, I, I would just come here and just go to chat GPT. I do, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Can you see my chat GPT screen yes, now? Yes, yes. Right. Yes. So I come here and I, I explain the situation to chat GPT, right? And say, um, if cell, this is, um, if cell B2023, for example, if cell B23, sorry, B23 contains, contains the word video, then return yes, otherwise no. For example, I, I, I'm explaining the situation to him. If blah, 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 right? So, ChatGPT, I beg, help me, you please, I beg, give me a formula that I can use, right? In an, blah, 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 and, and it gives me the form, this formula here, right? Wow. I'm like, okay, okay. I come here, right? And I put it here, and I copy it, and I press enter. Wow, 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 wow. And, oh my God, it got this right, right? And I do not teach you guys this number. I do not teach you guys search function. So it's making use of two functions that I do not teach you. But can you still do it? Yes, right? And it also gives you the explanation as to how it's done, right? Same thing for here, right? Let's say I like um, the, the, the if function I taught you now, right? So for example, I say, if, what I'll do here next steps is that if, if this, um, if, if this is no, then we, if this and this is no, then put, we have to talk. If this two is yes, put, um, all good. I can use if function, but let's say that I don't know what if function is, if and function, right? Right. I come here, right? And I say, Excel, you know, uh, please help me, please, I beg. I don't know what to do, right? He now tells me, okay, I'll show you this formula. I'm like, are you serious? Okay. So and I come here and I copy the formula from here, right? And I put it here in my Excel. Say, so Excel, please help me, right? I'm like, oh my God, it's working. Do you understand, right? So in case, in case you don't know how to use it, right? I mean, in case you don't know the form, the formula, you can always use that GPT, right? But Excel is an amazing tool. It's really, really an amazing tool, right? That you can use, right? Um, as I close out from today, I would like you guys to please do two things for me. Number one, I like you, I just posted a link and I'm, I'm also going to share with with you on, um, on, I mean, as an email. I like you guys to please, give me a feedback, right? Feel the feedback form. Like, I would like to get your, I mean, whether this class was useful for you, right? If you would like to have an advanced class and um, um, yes, just your your general perception of this, right? And please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel where I'll be posting out information around those 204 formulas and how um, you can use them. So please make sure you feel the feedback form and make sure you subscribe. Um, to the channel, All right? Um, I would like to get like hope you guys. I mean, hope you guys, even if anything, right? You let at least one or two things that you can begin to apply immediately to your day to day life, right? There are many other functions that we could not cover, many other things that we could not cover. But I mean, what I've done today is to just give the basics, right? Tomorrow, let's say tomorrow, next week, Saturday, I'm going to um, you can join as well if you registered. Um, I'm going to start with the basics for the first one hour, then the next hour I'm going to just go straight to function, right? So any, anywhere I stop in the first one hour, I stop there. Then I just go straight to the functions and next week we'll try and cover every single function. That's, that'll be the info next week, next week class. So please and please and please and please and please and please, and please, and please. make sure, make sure you please feel the feedback form. It will help me improve and make sure you subscribe to get more information around when more Excel, um, videos will be out. Thank you so much for joining guys today. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. Um, God bless and um,